What everybody? It's your boy Deshaun, Average Joe Sports, Apple Cup Edition. This Apple Cup is really, really special because for the first time in over a decade since 2002, really, because that's the last time I remember Apple Cup being this huge of an event, the dogs are number five in the country, and they are taking on the number 23 team in the nation, the Washington State Cougars. So uh, ov overall records here, Cougs are 8-3, and three, Dogs are 10-1, and one. and uh, as, as we all know, we, we know the rankings, we know both teams are very, very good, but again, this is Apple Cup. You take the 10-1, and one, you take the 8-3 and three and the number 5 team in, in the country versus the number 23 team in the country, you take those and you just throw them out. You want to know why? Because they don't matter. Strange things often happen. Uh, in, 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 in Apple Cup. Um, one game I remember specifically was 2002. I believe the Cougs at the time were ranked, I want to say, third or fourth in the country. They'd already locked up the Pac, the then Pac-10 title already, and uh, they, 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 were already, they already had a berth into the Rose Bowl, so their season was, was pretty much already done. All they needed to cap it off would have been just to beat UW. And, and go and go on and, and play in, in the Rose Bowl. Uh, after a twist of events and two overtimes and a and a forward pass that got knocked down and, and random things that happened, UW wins in, 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 in double overtime. I was a rookie in the Husky Band at the time, playing sousaphone, and uh, yeah, it was a great experience uh, for for me. Um, you know this. Up besides 2002, I'm sure there are times beforehand where Apple Cup really, really meant more than just the last game of the season. But that's the one that sticks out most to me because, well, I, quite frankly, I was there. Same thing is happening to, on Friday at 12:30. By the way, this game should never be played on a Friday. It's absolutely ridiculous that this game is played on a Friday. But again, that's a discussion for for later. Um, so, uh, but this Friday, basically. This time, this is for the share, uh, not for a share of the Pac-12 North, but for the Pac-12 North title and representing the Pac-12 North in the Pac-12 title game later on, later on in in, in the year here. So uh, let's just get to the stats again. A lot of things on the line and a lot of kooky things are going to happen. Um, starting off with Wazoo again, like I said, they're ranked 23rd in the country. Uh, they are eight and three. They are coming fresh off a loss from uh, Colorado by a score of thirty-eight to twenty-four. Um, key injuries here. Um, one of the key injuries is to wide receiver River Craycraft. He's out for the season uh, with an ACL injury. Now I had a chance to watch this guy uh, play over the course of this season and and last season. This boy, he's, he was a beast when he was on the field. He's definitely going to play on Sunday. Um, I don't know where he's, where he's going to get picked up at, but um, if I were a betting man, I'd say he's probably going to go to New England because he can play in the slot. He's also a great route runner as, as well. Um, another key, it's not so much a key injury as it is a, a key um, absence to, to the game. Um, Logan Tado, uh, he, was, uh, he, was, he was arrested uh, earlier for – for a robbery charge. Um, his suspension has been lifted, but it doesn't look like he's actually going to play in the Apple Cup. So um, that's, again, I think that that's a, that's a big blow to them as, as well. So that's all on the key, on the key injuries and, 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 addition, and additions that will not be playing on Friday. Um, let's just, let's just jump into it, man. Quarterback Luke Falk. He is healthy as F. I actually have that it written in my notes. Healthy as F. For the first time in quite some time. Uh, last season, he got injured uh, the week before Apple Cup. I uh, went down with concussion with concussion symptoms. So he's healthy. He is ready to go. This season, he has thrown for 3,935 yards, 36 touchdowns, and seven interceptions. The kid is sneaky good. Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah, sorry. Th 36 touchdowns, seven interceptions. But basically, what, is, what that's telling, telling me is that the kid is sneaky good, and when he gets into a rhythm and he's comfortable, he's practically unstoppable. And I've, I've noticed that by watching all, all of the games that I've seen on, on TV 
uh, th this season. So one of the one of the key things for the dogs, which we'll which we'll get into, is more of more of a tease right now. But one of the key things is how are the dogs going? Dogs defense going to make Luke Falk uncomfortable? That's going to be one of the key things uh, for, for for the dogs later on in in their part of of the Apple Cup preview here. Um, he's also got a t uh, back to Luke Falk. He's also got a talented group of wide receivers. Uh, Gabe Marks, 74 receptions, 755 yards, and 12 touchdowns. Also, you've got uh, Tavares Martin, uh, 57 receptions, 671 yards, and five touchdowns. And uh, Jamal Morrow, 44 receptions, um, 468 yards, and five, and five touchdowns. There's also a plethora of other receivers that Luke Falk has to throw to. It's it's literally longer than my arm. Get your head out of the gutter. I was I was gonna say something else. Um, so one of the key things that I've I've noticed this year versus last season was they've actually implemented more of of a running game to this high flying Big Twelve offense that Coach Leach likes likes to use. Um, Morrow's not only just uh, a, a, a receiver. He's also a running back as well. So from a from a from a running back's perspective, he's got 82 carries, 543 yards rather. Sorry, and uh, and four and four touchdowns just on the ground. But really, the ground game goes with uh, uh, Gerald Wicks. He's got 78 carries, 441 yards, and 11 touchdowns. Uh, quote, quote, follow closely behind with uh, James Williams. 86 carries, 531 yards, and six touchdowns. This is actually a key addition to the Cougs' offense as as a whole. Because not only can they throw the ball, now they can actually run the ball and actually kind of beat beat you down a little bit up front, and force and force the uh, defenses to to play up a little bit more, leaving the middle of the field open. Um, <clears throat> They're on on the defensive perspective. They are actually ranked 24th against the run, and 116th uh, against the pass. So again, some gaps. Um, like there, there's 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 some gaps there, and there, there's there's some room for for the dogs to to you know be able to uh, get back a, a little bit on on the Cougs on this one. Um, basically, as we as we all know, Mike Coach Mike Leach loves that Big Twelve style of football man throw the ball score touchdowns end of story he basically kind of beats people to sleep despite uh going into pac 12 play at one and two with losses to um uh eastern washington university uh, in, in a very very close game and also a loss to boise state which honestly i don't put that loss as being such a bad loss um because no one really wins in Boise. UW didn't win there. A lot of team Oregon, Oregon didn't win there. So it's, it's a tough play. Boise, Idaho is a play, tough place to play on the Smurf turf. Plain and simple. How I think the Coos can, can, can win this game, basically throw it out of the roof. Basically, you've got the home field. They've got the home field advantage. Um, and um, as long as... Uh, Luke Falk is able to be comfortable in the pocket and have time to throw. Like I said, he is practically unstoppable when when he when he's comfortable in the pocket. He's got the offensive line to keep him comfortable. It just all depends on whether or not the Huskies can actually break through and not always sack him, but get him uncomfortable, make him have make make, make him use his feet more. So because he likes to stay in that pocket, he likes to stand tall. And he, and he likes to throw throw that tight spiral, and he's accurate within uh, ten. Uh, sorry, was it uh, five five to five to fifteen yards, as as well as going long. Um, this season, I, I noticed that a lot of their passes fall with, within that within that middle middle of the field. So if you're playing zone and that middle of the field is open, he's gonna pick you apart. Plain plain and simple. So I think I think a key thing is keeping Luke Falk comfortable. And and off, and off the ground. That's going to be one. That's going to be the deciding factor for the Cougs in possibly winning this game. So, with with that, uh, jump down, jump over to the number five team in the country, Washington Huskies. Oh, man, it's been 
as 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 a Husky fan, again, I'm gonna, I always try to keep this as neutral as possible. But um, as a Husky fan, this season that that they're having is one that I saw a year possibly two away. Uh, but before we get into the into the positives, let's look at uh, the two key injuries here: linebackers JoJo Mathis, who's out for the season with a foot injury, and uh, linebacker Azim Victor, who's also out for the rest of the season. With a with, with with a broken leg, um, that's good. That's going to be killer because that's going to le- again. It's going to leave the middle of the field wide open. It's also going to put in people who are put in put in the next the next person up to uh, to possibly you know to to, to take the place that the, that the, to replace the holes that those two are definitely leaving out on the on the defensive side of of the field. And that's something that I feel that Wazoo can also exploit a little bit as as well. Um, again, we'll get, we'll get into that a little bit later here. Uh, but quarterback Jake Browning, Jake the Snake Browning, as as I like to call him in in, in my personal fantasies. Um, this year he is passed for 200, 2087, 2,870 yards rather. Uh, 37 touchdowns and seven interceptions. Um, a vast improvement in accuracy and, and touch on the deep ball this this season. Um, he still puts a little bit too much air on the ball, so he's kind of underthrowing his receivers just a little bit. But then again, I'm not really the greatest quarterback on the face of the planet either. This is just more of observations I've seen watching all the games, either on TV or at Husky Stadium. Um, he's got a great running back core as well. Uh, Led by Miles Askin for Gaskin. Yeah, I said it. Askin for Gaskin. Uh, he's got 182 carries for 1,130 yards. I believe that is actually a school record. Not entirely sure. Um, and uh, and nine touchdowns. And also followed behind with uh, LeVon Coleman. He's got 79 carries for 653 yards and four and four touchdowns. Um, basically, they're just they're just getting it done uh, in between. The tackles, the the front four, are are opening up the holes for them and, and making them look good. But on top of that, not not to be outshined, so to speak, uh, Jake Browning's got an excellent excellent receiving core to throw throw to, led by star receiver Sean Ross. Uh, sixty four receptions, nine hundred ninety one yards, and fifteen touchdowns. Also, every now and again, he likes to hit the juke button on, on people uh, when he's when he's in open space. Um, John Ross, he will play on Sundays. Thankfully, the dogs will have him for one more year. Um, followed behind with uh, Dante Pettis. Dante Pettis, 46 receptions, 701 yards, and 12 touchdowns in the air. And also, running back Chico McClasher is also a, a, a surprise addition to the, to the receiving core. Um, 22 receptions, 489 yards, five touchdowns. I know he's a, he's a running back, but he's been more utilized. Uh, in he's been more utilized as, as a receiver than than he has been as 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 a running back. Again, with Miles Gaskin and Levon Coleman taking the majority of the snaps, he's able to be free and be able to make plays with with his hands and continue to go down there. Husky defense. Uh, they are individually. They are ranked 32nd versus the run, and uh, 30th versus the pass. They actually have the 16th overall defense when when you put the two uh, two numbers together. Which for them, I actually have the versus the run. They 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 give up about 132 yards. They've given up 132.6 yards uh, on on the season, and on the pass, 195.8 yards on on the season. So again, Husky secondary. It's got a few holes, again, especially across the middle of the field. That's one thing that got um, exploited uh, in in their in their previous loss <clears throat> uh, to uh, to USC at home. So that was that was one that was one of the uh, defining moments in, in that in that previous game. Again, they got outplayed in that game. SC did their homework, and and their quarterback is absolutely amazing. And that's why I say if Luke Falk is comfortable in the pocket. The dog's going to get picked apart. Um, just looking at everything here from a defensive standpoint for for Wazoo, I think a key a key is can they also get to Jake Browning? 
also, are they going to be able to anticipate uh, where the ball is going to fall, where, where his target's going to be? Because again, on the deep ball, he's under throw, he's under throwing his his receivers by probably two yards, two maybe maybe three yards. Um, he doesn't have he doesn't completely have that 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 zip to throw 60 yards on, on, on a dime. But I think he's, he's still young enough, and I think he'll still get there. Um, I just think that this season, that's going to be something he's going to want to work on in the offseason. Um, but, yeah, all, all in all, these two teams are actually very evenly matched. They're more evenly matched than they have been in, in years past. Um, again, I'm not going to give you a prediction on who's going to win, number one, because I don't want to be wrong, and I don't want to deal – with my coog friends making fun of me, going like, "Your team is your team." Like me, 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 me. I don't want to deal with that. It's dumb. So I'm not going to give you a prediction, but um, I still actually think, if I had to give an edge to a specific team, and I and it's going to sound like I'm being a modern homer on this one, but I do think UW has a bit of an edge. The key is going to be again making Luke Falk uncomfortable on the offensive side of the ball. And two, they're going to have to figure out, they're, they're going to have to make sure that they don't get into a Big 12 style uh, scoring battle with Wazoo. Because I promise you, if you try and do that, Wazoo will beat you uh, in the end. Because again, those those Big 12, those Big 12 high scoring matches come down to who is the team that has the ball last and puts himself in the best scoring position. So that's going to be uh, a key and deciding factor in who wins this game. So um, I'm very excited for Friday. Also, I'm excited for Friday because uh, I know I don't talk TV on, on, on the sports blogs, but I'm real excited for Gilmore Girls. I don't care who knows it. I'm a man who loves Gilmore Girls. Deal with it. That's the thing. Um, also, in other sports news, uh, Seattle Sounders FC played against – uh, Colorado uh, yesterday they won by score two to one so uh, they go to Colorado and they play on the 20 they play on Sunday play at the same time as as the Hawks do uh, so hopefully we can get that score score some away goals there and, and get that win and go on to the go on to the, to our first MLS Cup uh, final that'll be that'll be great um, I saw some great scoring. I can't. I can't remember. I didn't write any of that down. I just wanted to give the Sounders a shout out. Um, also, my Raiders, eight and two, so wonderful. I can't even. I can't even deal with it. Um, anyway, we've been at this for almost twenty minutes. I gotta go. Uh, so go dogs, go Sounders, go Raiders, and you know what? Go Hawks too. Even though, because I root on the side. Anyway, that's Average Joe Sports Apple Cup preview. Peace out.